Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today I wanted to do a video. I'm actually going to let you just kind of watch me process. I'm going to process. I went over the weekend and finally I saw the movie Bohemian Rhapsody. And it was sort of a birthday present and I was able to go on a chilly Saturday and watch it. And now it's Monday when I'm recording this. So I saw it on Saturday about noon and I'm still processing it. So I'd like to, to talk about it with you a little bit. First of all, I wanna to say to anyone who's a mega fan of Freddie Mercury or the band Queen, that I am not going to give like a full assessment or an evaluation of the credibility of the movie or the facts of the movie or anything like that. That's not what this is about. This is about Bridget processing from the perspective of what I know and how I've connected with Freddie in the afterlife and how now I've learned a little more about his life through the movie and I recognize that the movie is not going to be this accurate it's not a documentary so I know it's not this like play by play of his life and such so I know what the criticisms are I know that there are some criticisms of the movie so besides all that me as a person processing and and knowing Freddie in the afterlife as just this oh gosh no okay right away I can see him he's right in front of me sitting on this little bench thing this little ottoman bench thing I have off to my side the side here he's like leaning in like listening to see what I'm going to say about him <laughs> very sweet he's a very sweet soul kind and muse like like a muse very creative and colorful and expressive and honest I think you're very honest. That's how I would describe you. And so um, in the movie, so let me talk to them about the movie. So in the movie theater, when we were watching the movie, I, I got very emotional at the part, and I know some of you are gonna think this is so strange, but I got really emotional when I was watching the movie at the part where they did the We Will Rock You. And they were showing, it was a scene where the band was showing how they um, wanted to get the audience involved or what have you. And so the, the song We Will Rock You where you, know, you stamp your feet and you clap your hands and everybody knows it's like an anthem. Like I knew that in high school, we play, they played it all the time for everything and, and randomly, the fans, even now in my, like my daughter's age and their high school, my kids right now, they do it. They stamp their feet and clap their hands and they sing it. They just sing it, randomly sing it. I mean, it's crazy. And I mean, it's cool, right? It transcends. It's like legendary. And so when that came, I, I just felt this incredible energy through the back of my heart. And it like came like from the back of me, like just this warmth from like under my shoulder blades and right through my center of my heart and just this like shoo, out the front, like just shoo, like a cannon of love, like fireworks and just like spraying love over everyone. And so that everyone was included and I cried. Like I real, thank goodness I had like napkins from the popcorn. <laughs> And I just cried. And that's like like a random scene to cry. I just cried and cried and cried. I, I just was like, oh. Like and I said, I feel you. I feel the caring for the fans, for the audience. And it was so funny. So that was the one big thing that I remember. Prior to that, like early on in the movie when the very beginning when they, they open up in the movie and they're showing Live Aid, the performance of Live Aid, and then the movie goes back through all the, the, the scenes and then it ends with the Live Aid kind of thing, you know? And so they open up with the Live Aid and just getting ready to step on stage. He's there and he's kind of jumping, you know, ready. He gets up in the morning, he goes, gets ready. And he's there and, and they open the, the curtain and there's like, people everywhere and there's like a camera like right in his face and he's like 
right, walking out on stage. And I, and I see it from, like, we see it. They show us cinematically from his perspective and stepping out there and then it's just seeing all these people and this camera here and this camera over here and there's, you know, all these wires and stuff and the cameras down here and I'm just like, and it doesn't even face him. Like I'm standing there and I'm having this experience in the movie theater because that's what that's what they want you to experience, right? Like you're him. And I am seeing through his eyes, as you did probably when you watched the movie, and there was no there was no fear, there was no stage fright, there was no, oh my God, all these people are here. There was just this yes of course like such a gift like yeah I mean, all right you know i'm one of you i'm with you and there wasn't this separation like he's on stage he's the queen <laughs> and they're the the devoted followers it wasn't like that there was no separation there was just unity there was just unity and that's how he really felt like he really felt that way and then he says and I leaned over to tell my husband because I said, he said, because he was right. So my husband was here on my right side, then it was me. And then Freddie, of course, was sitting next to me because I thought, I didn't know if he would like come to the movie. I didn't know what was going to happen really. And I, I was open. I was like, I don't really, I just wanted to go because I felt like I should have the experience before it gets out of the theaters, you know? I mean... I needed to have that experience. All of you have said how wonderful it is and, and I, I wanted to know him more. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna go to the movie. And my husband really wanted to go too, like really wanted, like he has been on me since like December to go and we just haven't been able to go. And so my birthday weekend in February, perfect. So we did. And so he was next to me. So I knew he was there because I could feel all the warmth on my shoulder and I just kind of like didn't really say much. And so after the movie started, during that scene and opening this love and this just, they were one. He, the band wasn't better than the people and the people weren't better than the band. It was just the synchronicity and this, just this, the energy was just this beautiful, it was like an infinity sign, you know, it was just uh, this beautiful exchange, this giving and receiving on both, every single person there. It was so awesome to feel how he felt when he performed on stage and so cool and so then I lean over to my husband and I said Freddie said I said Freddie says Bridget would have a heart attack like getting on stage and having all these people there like that like I like he said I would have heart attack and he's probably right he didn't say that he those weren't his exact words his exact words were something like Bridget would blank her pants you know, like crap my pants. She would crap her pants, but he didn't say crap. He used a different word, a little more stronger, and I don't like to use it on YouTube, you know? So uh, yeah, that's what he really said. <laughs> and I'm like, he's right. She would, her pants. <laughs> like, yeah, I would, I would, I, I would. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was just kind of funny, but then that emotional experience with We Will Rock You, and. It's because it, so I work as a psychic and a medium, but I also work as a healy, uh, as a clear and a healer. I work in energy as well. And so if you've had session with me, you know that. And like, I am the total package, to be quite honest. And I love it. I love it. Like, I know my worth just like Freddie did. I know my worth. He knew the worth of his band. I know the worth of my band. <laughs> All right. So... The point is, is I can feel, so when you, you put your feet on the earth like that and you tap the earth, you're connecting to earth energy. You're connecting into all the life source, all the Shakti energy. You're bringing up that energy, that Kundalini from the earth, that life source energy, and you're bringing it right into your body and you're doing it twice. And then you clap your hands and the hands are, are an extension of the heart chakra. So you're bringing up energy from the earth, from the root, and bring it all the way up through your body. And when you clap, you're letting it out through your heart chakra. So that's why I felt it like warm in the back of my shoulder blades coming through the, the center of the heart and then like rockets firing and cannons, beautiful colors of fireworks and just this beautiful golden this spray over everybody. Like, oh my God, it was so beautiful, so beautiful. 
So those were the cool things. I thought you guys would appreciate uh, hearing my perspective of the movie and my like sensory experiences that I had during it. And, you know, I understand that the, I understand that some fans and viewers especially would feel that some of the the storyline about Freddie's personal life, his private life, um, his shenanigans. I'm going to say your shenanigans. Um, that's what he would say, probably, actually, my shenanigans. Um, was glossed over a bit. And I know that some people really wanted more of the raw, like the real experience. Um, because a lot of like his his love life and um his how do i say his relationships and this need it almost seemed like he was constantly alone and he was so he was seeking connection or seeking love it seemed like and i have felt that when i connected with him this incredible desire to be connected to others and I wouldn't say not even connected belonging like that's why I think for him and the band to feel like family was so important to him and they did and that was very truthful they he very much it was all of them you know he wasn't like this oh me 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 it was very much all he really did and they all do have that really and that's honest I mean that's pure and I always feel when I've connected with him, even though he's fun and and muse-like and just uh, such a joy. I mean, just so caring. He's so loving. He's just so free, loving with his energy. He just, you know, readily accepts other people and things. And he, a little bit cautious, but he wants to love people. He wants, that's what I would say, not readily accepts. I would say he wants to love people. He really wants to love people and he wants to be loved and feel it and there's such a sadness about that isn't there i mean he feels like the inner child within him just and it wasn't even the inner child because you can't look at his upbringing or his family and say oh it was the family it, that's not at all what he projects or portrays even though they had a um a different um a rather strict um, structure uh, around, you know, faith and spirituality and 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 such. He and they were basically refugees, from what I understand now, from what many of you have told me and what I've seen um, in the movie and you know and and heard from other sources as well. Um, that that I mean basically, you know, and so it wasn't. It was an easy, it was not an easy life or upbringing, but I, I wouldn't say he didn't love himself. I wouldn't say that either, because that's not true. That's not really accurate either. But, but I feel like, I feel like I understand this and I'm just gonna be bold and say that. I feel like I understand that because of my experience and it's brought up a whole bunch of stuff for me to even for more healing for me around the relationship I had with my dad who died of AIDS, who led a, a secret life and um, was married and yet having relationships with men as well. And that wasn't known, like at least to us, like the kids and my mom didn't know, she said she didn't know. And so understanding that there's this, is there a part of me that's bad because this isn't like what my family wants for me or um, not feeling accepted within ourselves. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like there's so much fear over how the people that we love the most will accept us. I don't know how to explain this. It's hard to articulate these things. And and especially because I myself haven't had this experience. well, that's not totally true. So when when it comes to being who you are, 
I sure as hell have had that experience, trying to have enough guts and courage to stand up and say, this is who I am. I am a psychic. I am a medium. I know that's not the norm. I know people will call me all sorts of crazy things, and they do on YouTube too. A lot of those things get caught though because I have a filter, but um, all sorts of insane things people say about that and how horrible it is that I'm a psychic and a medium and things. They still like now, but it's different because now I'm like, hey, this is who I am and I love this. This is beautiful and it's a gift and it's who I am. I am in my authenticity. I am showing up. I'm on YouTube for crying out loud. <laughs> this is who I am. So I understand what it's like to have to kind of fight to be who you are. And that's part of the reason why my first marriage broke up was because I'm like, no, this is who I am. This is the way it is. I'm not going to hide this or pretend like it's some circus act thing because it's not. This is who I am. And so I can relate to needing to fight to be who you are or even within yourself to accept it because I had a perfectly great life. I mean, I went to college. I have a couple of college degrees, actually. I'm educated and I had a 10 year career that was quite successful and working my way up the career. Ladder. I mean, I had, I mean, this isn't for the money, clearly, because I was making so much more than that and I had benefits and tuition reimbursement and great hours and vacation, and all sorts of stuff. And so, I had to make choices to align myself to be who I am, to allow myself to just fully accept it, not just even embrace it and live it, but first you have to accept it. And so I think for Freddie, perhaps maybe that was a lifelong struggle. And not even to accept that he was gay, but to understand how that works for him, how that fits when he loved Mary so much because he clearly loved Mary. He loved her. Like, like you love your wife, like you love your high school sweetheart, like you love your spouse, like you love, like he loved her, like she was the one for him, you know? And yet he was attracted to men. And so there's like this, and it's it's interesting because it's like in the movie there was this line like he says to her I think I'm bisexual and she said no you're gay and yet I'm like well if he, this if this would have happened instead of in the late 80s or in the 80s early 80s mid 80s whatever 80s let's say early 80s okay so this wouldn't have happened in the early 80s if it would have happened in 2012 or 15 how would this have been different because there's less of a need, it seems like, to define relationships and through intimacy or sexuality that it's different. You know what I mean? It's not, there's not this, you're this or you're that. You know, it's not like that anymore, really. I mean, I mean, I don't think it is. So, I just... I don't, it's not true that he didn't love himself because he clearly had so much love and capacity for love, but he was so lonely, like felt like people didn't really understand them because he didn't feel like he really belonged in either place. He didn't belong in a relationship with women. He didn't belong in the relationship with men. Maybe it would be different if he could have gotten married because he really, it feels like he wanted that committed commitment, you know, that family. He wanted that. Like, that was the thing. That's the deal with the cats, you guys, is that. And it's funny because I was telling him, wow, the cats, totally an unconditional love thing. And I don't want to be alone thing. And a divine feminine thing, actually. Hello, divine feminine, Freddie Mercury. You've got a lot of that vibrational energy. That's pretty cool. We should do a whole video just about that. We should chat about that. He says, let's do it. Yes, we could. <laughs> So am I reflecting, like I'm processing how I am interpreting things. How do you feel about all this? He said, it's not my feelings, it's your feelings. This whole point, he says, the whole point is for you to understand, to learn more about whatever it is you need to learn more about for your life. Yeah. He says, Bridget, you know it's about you, your dad. I'm like, I know. That was the hardest part for me in that one and I thought it would be more emotional when I watched the scene, but it wasn't. It was after that, I think. I've had two nights of like dreams about stuff. 
about pieces of the movies, the movie, and I've woken up with songs in my head that I've never heard before, which are Queen songs, by the way. Thank you very much, Mr. Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I'm like, what is the song? So I type up the line on my phone when I wake up because it's in my head, and then it's a Queen song. Thanks. Um, he said, it's medicine. It's medicine. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, That part in the movie at the end when they show you getting diagnosed and leaving and you know having to be like in kind of a disguise and that kind of thing and then seeing the young man that's there and with his lesions so he obviously had very um, very advanced stage of AIDS and you know they made him look really like he was you know very close to the end of his life and no rec recognizing you and you responded back to him with humanity, you know, and I, I'm sure that didn't actually happen. Like, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't believe any of that. I mean, I know a lot of the movie stuff was brought together to create an experience to take us on a journey and to reflect many aspects of who you were and what Queen was and how, how it affected other people, like the, the energy of the fans and this desire to belong and how how through this experience of the movie we get all of these emotions and understandings from it in all of these experiences but they're not you know this is exactly what happened that's not what the movie you guys that's not what a movie is you go to a documentary if you want that um what touched me about that part was thinking about how you and I know this about you from talking with you in our conversations, where when you were diagnosed with AIDS, you refused to just roll over and die from it. You're like, oh, oh, poor me, oh. I mean, it's not like you went into this like horrible depression or anything like that. It was like, oh, well, okay, I'm gonna live. Now I'm gonna live. I'm gonna do whatever I can and I'm gonna live. I'm gonna do what I can with the time that I have left. Like really this appreciation for life and that is so beautiful that is profound and that's exactly how he is you guys that's exactly how he felt that's exactly how he was that's exactly how he lived so beautiful freddie i need to do more videos like this and we're gonna have to chat again because i don't want this to get too long people get bored of that kind of stuff so he says oh totally bored he's like oh i'm bored too he's like sitting there like petting the cat <laughs> he's petting the cat <laughs> like all right let's have another talk should we yeah start it again all right this is Bridget at Above Life channel this has been my response my initial reactions to watching the movie Bohemian Rhapsody I was able to watch it over the weekend and I know many of you have been on me to tell me I need to see it so here's some of my initial responses my feelings about it and a few little tidbits about Freddie as he has joined me for it all right this isn't a traditional channeling video I know but I thought it was important to share it with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more with Freddie Mercury, please put it in the comments below. Let me know, I'd appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, the purpose has been to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope because this, right here and right now, this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Go live it. Thanks for watching.